Welcome back everyone. Today I have another video for uh, Zorro. I will this time I'm doing a, like a mini series right now where I'm trying to um, prepare because I'm going to um, the regional that is happening this uh, weekend. If you are going, please come say hi to me. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to the regional and uh, I'm trying to decide which deck I'm going to take. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing like a pros and cons on each deck um, and I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, the first deck that I wanted to share that with is Zoro. Uh, the main reason why I would take Zoro is because it is well positioned into like the the, the decks that have like problems against me, removal mainly, I feel like. So um, this deck really houses the decks that, uh, that requires to have a board, requires to have a big creature to defend or to uh, start going. Uh, so, example, something like Zoro, I mean, Law is very good against something like, um, um, I don't know, something like uh, Kiemon kind of is like a 50-50. Uh, like the green decks are like a 50-50, depending on how good you uh, your hand is and how good you play it. Um, the, um, the red decks, the mirror, that's one of the things that concerns me about playing red right now, uh, especially in, in Zoro. Uh, it feels like in the mirror is gonna be very well decided by how many white beers did you draw, and you only have the four white white beers. And um, Zoro does have an advantage in uh, in the fact that you get to play your cards like aggressively, uh, use them as decoys and defense, and also uh, apply some pressure. So by the time you play your white beer, you're gonna be at a, at a high light total, and you're gonna be able to um, to take advantage of that fact, right? So that's the reasons to play the deck. The reasons why I wouldn't like to play the deck. Um, it's mainly because of um, uh, a white beer. Uh, because I feel like that matchup is, is going to be really hard. Uh, it's going to be like mostly decided on how many white beers they see. Not so much how many I see, but how many they can uh, establish over me. Uh, because they can, they're able to defend their leader uh, super easily. Um, and uh, my white beers are probably not going to be enough to close the game. And his cars are much bigger, are much harder to pressure. And he's able to just maintain the uh, the pace of the game uh, that way. Uh, it is a really tough matchup for Zoro. However, not all the versions of white beer are bad for, for this leader. Uh, there's also the boat version, for uh, which is this leader is actually very good against. Because they don't have like a top end white beer, which makes them like really hard to keep, to actually go for game. They only have like that their top end is just like the small creatures, and yeah, they're very big, but they're they're not like they're easy to remove. They're not that difficult, and that version of the deck against removal, like if you remove the threats consistently, they really are not that aggressive. They really don't do much, and they're easier to beat than the regular version where they um. When the, like the version where they're playing the white beers, which is much more difficult for this leader. Um, so it is a 50-50 on that end, right? Because uh, I assume white beers leaders want to edge in the mirror by playing the boat uh, engine, uh, and then you take advantage of that end. Uh, but you also have the disadvantage of like if actually people are playing like the uh, Strahd uh, hybrid, uh, you're much weaker against that leader. Uh, against that version and that's the main reason that you wouldn't take this leader also the green matchups are not like the best matchups actually uh if they have like tapper 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 into uh odin and uh, dual attack you they can absolutely outpace you and you would need to have like a, exactly like perfect removal like you just your pistols have to be able to remove the um the a drop um and that's really difficult not always uh, it's possible however you do have gordon you do have uh, Otama, so you have some ways of interacting with the what the opponent is doing, uh, but it's a much difficult, uh, much more difficult matchup. And again, it comes back to uh, White Beer as to how many you're gonna see to be able to win those matchups. Uh, and that's pretty much uh, how I'm standing right now on Zoro. Um, I feel like it, it is not a bad pick at all, um, especially if uh, after the tournaments that we've seen so far, um, like. Uh, Law being one of the decks that has won recently, uh, that this is a really good pick into Law. Uh, the um, uh, Luffy, Luffy, this is a decent matchup against Luffy because you do spam the boar and you have efficient removal and you get to pressure the leader 
uh, efficiently enough. So it is not a bad matchup for uh, for this deck. And then you also have it will be at about a 50-50. Again, it all comes down to the, to the white beer most likely. And then um, it is really good against. Um, uh, it is a, a little bit like a 50-50 against against flamingo. It is not that easy. It is not that difficult. It mostly depends on how many uh, like cards that draw cards they see, and then you're able to not remove. For example, like they get Komoria, their Love Love Beams, their um, their Boa Hancock. If you're not able to remove a Boa Hancock, you're gonna get housed by the Boa Hancock. So uh, something like that you have to keep them in mind. Uh, but it is beatable um, depending on how the opponent plays and all of that. All those factors uh, do uh, include into the uh, my calculations as to why to play this leader or not. Um, I would consider uh, playing this leader uh, for sure. I don't think it's a bad pick. Uh, I think it could win a tournament. Um, it will most likely depend on uh, how good um, the white beer are gonna show up in the in the hard matchups where you are gonna need it. Uh, and if it doesn't show up, you're most likely going to lose. Uh, that's one of the things uh, that I feel like uh, I'm a little bit fearful of uh, playing this this leader. Uh, but that's what my thoughts on the deck right now. Um, if I'm going to have another, I'm going to show some gameplay because uh, I had some time to play like one game. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do with like all the videos that I'm going to be releasing. Um, so yeah, so just enjoy the, the matchup that I have for you, uh, for you today. And... Okay, and we're going to play the mirror. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about the mirror, that's another thing that I forgot to specifically mention about this deck. Um, this deck really is really reliant on uh, drawing Nami and the Dan to be able to function correctly. Because um, if you play your cards that don't replace themselves and they get removed, you're losing cards from your hand, and that is very important. So here in the mirror, for example, I'm going second. They have uh, Robin. Uh, fortunately for me, I do have the Jet Pistol, but uh, that's something that that if if I don't have the Jet Pistol, I'm immediately behind. And the two cards that I play, if they don't do anything, that I, I have less cards to defend uh, my opponent's leader. Um, however, I'm able to have the Jet Pistol here. I'm able to attack for five. And then I still have these two cards that eventually are going to give me some value, especially because he didn't play anything early on. He kept the hand, especially because he had the Robin on two. Um, so we, me being able to answer that is is really good. Now I do see my white beer, which is gonna be again really important for this matchup. However, he is playing one of the best cards for the mirror, which is Ura, uh, as it is able to uh, bring a body, uh, get something back. That is very important in the mirror. Um, it is a really good card to play there, and yeah, that immediately puts me a little bit behind. But it's still, I, I I drew my second white beer. So I know what my game plan is for this matchup. It's going to be definitely just start slamming uh, white beers back to back, right? Uh, my opponent is trying to defend his life a little bit so they don't want to get too low so they can play their white beer uh, with more life. Uh, I can understand that. Um, they're a little bit behind, so they should still take... They should still be trying to look for the 9-drop and not over-defend too much. Because uh, I don't know if they already have it. Maybe they have it and they just want to go into the white beer with like a, a good turn. Um, the best thing that you can do to set up to a white beer, uh, what I've noticed with the deck, is uh, trying to attack with all the creatures that you have the turn before that you are going to play the white beer. The reason why is because you're able to um, use them as blockers for one turn. And then you slam the white beer and you basically draw like fog their turn, like their one turn. And you're able to um, to use them as blockers, and that's basically how you do it. So this turn, I'm gonna be able to attack with the cards that I have on board. I'm gonna use the jet pistol because I wanna um, just generate a little bit of push there. Um, I could have played the Gordon, uh, but I didn't see the need. Gordon's still gonna be good like later uh, in the turns. So I'm just trying to uh, get to the white beer, and that's why I, I'm gonna attack him with everything in my board because I want him to attack it. That's what I want him to do, and um, if he attacks it, then I don't have to defend uh, my life. And then back to back white beer, I'm gonna have a, a, a huge hand, and that's gonna g give me the game. Um, this is what I'm thinking, of course. So if my opponent wants to play a Ronda, they just have to attack my leader. But then after I have played my two white beer back to back, then I have 
extra attackers that I can maybe do something with uh, if he doesn't deal with them. Um, I am expecting the 9 drop. The moment I don't see the 9 drop is the moment I think uh, I am very good right now. Um, and here, he maybe should have, if he doesn't have the 9 drop, he cannot be two back to back 9 drops, right? So he has to have, a, like, he has to find the answer for that. So I feel like if you're going second and you're missing the uh, the 9 drop here, the best thing that you can do is just attack the leader. Just keep going at the leader. Uh, if you're going into their 9 drop turn, uh, just go after the leader. I think it's better than attacking their the dance or whatever. If they spend energy using the dance, then you're that's much better for you than if they spend energy trying to do um, a, a 9 drop, right? Uh, that's when we're, you're gonna probably lose the game. Uh, here, I, I'm, in a, I'm able to just ignore his board because I'm a 7k leader now and I have enough cards in my hand to where that doesn't matter. Um, I'm putting my opponent at 7 cards in hand, 6 cards in hand. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna ignore the leader because I mean the cards on board because they are just distractions at, at that point. I don't need to, uh, I, I want to attack him before he can, he finds his 9 drop and then if I spend my turns just killing the small creatures that don't really do anything right now, uh, I'm just gonna lose behind on tempo right now. Now, however, one card that I do want to deal with is that Zoro because that Zoro is able to pressure me well enough through my 9 drop. So I do want to have, uh, I do want to answer a little bit that card because it is a little, that, that one requires, like if they want to attack with the other two cards, it requires for them to touch at least two energy to be able to attack. And I'm okay with that. That that I, I can I can live with. However, if he attacks with the Zoro, which is only one energy on like attach a couple of two more, then he starts attacking for ten, and then that's a much harder number to defend. And then I have to be a little more careful, or I have to pitch a lot of cards, and that's the situation that I don't want to be in the following turn. Uh, but of course, if this is based on what whatever my opponent is gonna do, I'm gonna advance it a little bit because I remember my opponent just takes a little bit here in this decision. Okay, there you go. Uh, so he decides to um, attack with the Zoro for a big number. Um, and that's correct. This is the correct decision because if he doesn't have the 9 drop right now, then he has to close the game quickly. And now attacking for 7, yeah, okay, of course. The Zoro, you always attack for 7 because uh, it's always going to happen, right? Uh, the, this one, you attack for 10. Uh, well, 9 is an okay number, but I have enough cards to where that number doesn't affect me. So I probably would have attacked for... Uh, no, 9 is fine because I was bluffing. I mean, I was representing the, the Radical Beam. So attacking for more than 9, it was probably just a waste of uh, energy at that point. Uh, now he's probably going to attack for 7 with the Sanji. Uh, and I do have the 2k counters to just uh, out-combo. And just when I play my second white beer, it's going to be back-breaking for him. Uh, he does have this card for anyone who hasn't seen it. It's a blocker that on block, if he has a Dawn under, uh, he's able to play a, a two drop for the ham. I'm imagining he's playing it for the mirror. Um, I don't really know if that card is, uh, good enough, but it's, it, I mean, he's playing it and that's fine. It's probably going to work for him here. I am going to attack the Zoro before I attack the life because he still has the blocker. So he can block one of my, my attacks. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I do want to deal with the with the Zoro, if possible, uh, because that car is just gonna put a lot of pressure. I can always uh, go for game next turn. I have three good attacks here, so I don't think he's gonna be able to uh, combo me next turn either way, even if he has one life. So I just want to uh, prevent him from uh, doing too much damage to me, and that's the way that I do it. That's that that, that is the the reasoning behind it. Like I can attack the leader, put it to zero, and he blocks. And then that's just not good enough for me. Now he plays the white beer, and then he attaches to the uh, uh, Ura. I, it was a little bit hasty, I guess. Uh, I will, I will block. I have a one K that I could block here, but I will take it for the purpose of testing, uh, as if uh, he had a, a put the dawn under the Zoro uh, to attack with it. Um, so it just, uh, I just wanted to, like that's the the correct play that he should have done. And I, I'm, I'm testing that weight, so because it's just good for me. Um, and I, here I just win the game. Uh, there's no way he, he, he cannot combo out of this turn. And there's no way he can go for game next turn either. So 
However, I, w I was trying to just, uh, just in case I was, if he out combos this one, then I was thinking, then I just play the Nami, try to get a 2k or a Radical Beam, so I can secure the fact that he cannot go for game next turn. Uh, I highly doubted that he was going to be able to uh, to kill me that turn, but I just wanted to have that option just in case. So yeah, that's the game that I have for today. That's all I have for today. Um, if you guys see me at the event, uh, please come say hi. Uh, I will be really happy to uh, talk with you all and have uh, a discussion. That, that's, that's the idea of uh, the channel and everything, right? Um, with that being said, that's all, everything that I have for today. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day.